Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another daily practice tip for you. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about intonation tendencies and in particular, the intonation tendencies of brass instruments, in particular low brass instruments on the third partial. So this is a more advanced technique we talked on a previous video about the intonation in the sixth partial. So this is going to be, for example, starting on our F above the staff for trombone, euphonium, and baritone. This is going to be for our F in the staff for tuba. And how we have to adjust the intonation because that sixth partial tends to sit fairly sharp. Now, there are some other areas that we end up having to deal with that also have some intonation tendencies. Um, but these ones, for example, what I'm going to talk about today in the third partial, this is really a more advanced concept. So until you are really comfortable with your intonation in general through the instrument, you know, until you're making those adjustments in the, thick, the sixth partial, oh, and frankly, until you're really comfortable making sure that you have your your tone your you know your pitch really centered on the instrument you know that you've got a nice stable core that everything is locking in you know until these things are happening making subtle adjustments with the intonation aren't really going to help a whole lot we have to have a good stable sound to start off with so this is assuming we've got a nice stable sound we can control the pitch um, and then we can start adding this here. So the third partial, although it doesn't ride as sharp as the sixth partial, it does ride a little bit sharp, anywhere from say seven to 10 cents sharp, which is still you know, somewhat significant. So one really great way to test this is obviously you could pull out your tuner and you know, be watching what's happening when you're shifting, for example, from your B flat, your B flat below the second, this is the second partial B flat going to your third partial F. Now, the tricky thing is for a lot of us is, you know, whether it's trombone, especially euphonium tuba, where we tend to have a little bit more room to move the pitch with our aperture, if we're not careful, we're, our ears are going to subtly shift that intonation. We're going to be changing things with our aperture as it is, which is not always the best thing. Um, on trombone, in particular, we really want to try to keep the embouchure out of intonation as much as possible. Uh, tuba, euphonium, baritone, obviously that's a different story. Uh, we do need to be making some of those changes with those instruments, and so this is good to be aware of as well. But regardless um, of what instrument we're on, if we make that transition, that slur from B flat to F, and if we're really making sure to keep that pitch centered and we're not changing things where that note is setting with the embouchure, it's going to ride a little bit sharp there. Now, how much do we have to move? Not a whole lot. So, for example, if we're talking about trombone, we're talking a lot of times maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little bit smaller than that. Um, but... It really it does play a role, especially in a lot of ensemble settings. If we're having intonation challenges, being aware of what that third partial is doing. So obviously this is going to carry through a lot of really that important baritone range for us. So our F, E natural, E flat D, D flat C, B natural, all of these are going to be affected by this. So we really want to be aware that we may have to make these changes. Um, now, interestingly, on euphonium, for example, or baritone tuba, these are only going to be exacerbated. They're only going to be made more difficult by the intonation problems we have when we start to combine vowels together. As a quick refresher, if you haven't experienced this, on valved instruments, each valve should play in tune, but as we start to combine valves, as we're, as we're combining lengths of tubing together, they are not the exact same length. We need to actually play those notes in tune because the distance we need works on a logarithmic scale, not on a one-to-one -one scale. And so what that means is when we start getting into the lower uh, vowel combination, for example, two and three, one and three, one, two and three, those notes tend to sit on the sharp side it is. As it is, the length is not quite enough to make it actually sit into the pitch. And then when you take that and combine it with some of the intonation tendencies of the instrument, anyway, this is going to become even more important. So 
How do we practice this? Well, first off, and a lot of times, just like when we were dealing with, for example, a six partial, it's an awareness thing. First off, just knowing that, okay, I'm going to have to make this change. So taking your time when you're going through, working through things like scales, for example, making sure that you're making those adjustments. So there I'm physically thinking, okay, I'm gonna need to be lowering my positions just a little bit, or, if I'm on euphonium or if I'm on tuba, knowing that I need to really trust my ears, I'm going, I may have to lower that pitch a little bit with the embouchure or make other changes, for example, alternate fingerings, depending on what note I'm playing, what role I'm playing in the ensemble. So really taking your time, you know, within your scale work or your etude work that you're doing, using lip slurs for this. Now, this is a little controversial, especially with trombones. Um, a lot of trombone players feel like when you are playing lip slurs, you should not be doing any slide movement at all. Everything should be just remaining in place because we're really focusing on... We're just really focusing on the slur and moving with the embouchure. I think there, there's a, a certainly a level of truth to that, but at the same time, I view any time we're playing, we are training our ears, and if we're not making those adjustments, all we're doing is we're training our ears to be hearing the wrong thing. So, what I'll do honestly a lot of times that I will practice lip slurs both ways. I will practice them where I am just really, I'm almost ignoring the pitch for a moment and I'm just focusing on what this feels like and how smoothly I'm moving between the different partials, but then I will also go through. <laughs> And I'm going to be making those adjustments for the intonation as well so that A, I can practice that and keep reinforcing that and I can make sure I'm continually training my ears to where the pitch should actually be. But like I said, as more than anything else, it really is a lot of times just an awareness of it. Like, oh, I know that this third partial may be a little bit sharp, seven to 10 sharp. I may need to lower the pitch a little bit with my slide or with my embouchure. And then of course, being aware of how this plays a role in when to, whether we're playing by ourselves or especially when we're playing with others, when we're playing in an ensemble setting. So that'll be another video coming up here where I talk about specifically intonation in ensemble settings, how we deal with chords, what are some of the changes we need to make with that here. But this is something really, again, beware of it. If things are going well for you, if you're we're working at really fine tuning the intonation, this is something really good for us to be thinking about. So as always, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment on the video here or shoot me an email at tromboneshop at schmidtmusic.com. So please check out our other videos. Please have fun practicing and keep making music.